Hey everyone, welcome back to day two of the 12 days of Christmas. Today is a little bit of a short video tutorial, but a really great card. This is a card that I could totally see myself making a bunch of this holiday season because they are pretty quick, easy, and simple. Now I'm gonna be using this gorgeous layering stencil today from Altenew that I can't wait for you to see. Let's get started. All right, here's a preview of today's card. I'm going to be using a stencil here that is a stencil set. So there's an A and a B to this one. This one's called Classic Pine Stencil A and B from Altenew. One has the sprig leaves that you're going to be doing and the other one has the pine cones. And it shows you here how you can line them up and how they look when they're all finished. So you can use a variety of mediums on this. You can ink them up, you can use the stencils to do coloring, you could use gels, pastes, whatever your heart desires. Today I'm gonna to keep things relatively simple, use what I know and do some inks. So I'm going to attach the stencil using some purple tape and we're gonna get started. So I have my stencil all lined up here. I'm going to be using some spruce ink from Catherine Pooler and I'm using my life-changing blender brushes to blend in some of the color. I'm really saturating the areas. I want them nice and dark so that when they dry up, they're a really deep green. Now, I love the stencil very much because it leaves a lot of clean space still. Even though it's a busy background, I find there's enough white space that I can still keep this card relatively clean and simple when it's all finished. Now, not clean and simple, maybe in the most extreme way, but you know, it's still leaving enough white space for my liking. Now, for the pine cones, you just need to line them up. I find personally that there's a lot of solid space here, so it's pretty easy to line them, those big pine cones up because they're large spaces. I'm gonna be using icing on the cake. This is a nice deep brown color, and I'm gonna go over the pine cones. Now, it's up to you here what you wanna do. You can go in with a white gel pen later and accent these. You could use some Distress Spray, spray over top of the stencil and then sprinkle with gold and get some embossed flakes. That's kind of what I wanted to do, but I don't have any Distress Spray at the moment after moving. But you can really spice these up as much as you want, but I really think that they're beautiful the way they are. Now, I went ahead, I have these from a previous card. These are the fine frame stencils from Altenew, and they are some beautiful dye that cut out these really tiny frames. They cut out a super thin one and one that's a couple of millimeters thick. And I had a whole bunch of these left over cut in Harvest Gold by Tonic Studios. It's a beautiful cardstock. So I just set those aside because I'm going to be using those as an accent today. But I wanted to heat emboss my sentiment first. I am using a stamp set from scrapbook.com called Big and Bold Holidays. I'm going to do the typical ink it up in Versamark ink, stamp it, and then add some embossing powder. I'm using some rich gold embossing powder from WOW, and I'm using my WOW embossing tool here in order to heat everything up and make sure that it's nice and melted and shiny and beautiful. I think gold with these pine cones and that spruce color is a really great accent color to use on the card. I'm just going to trim down the sentiment here and take a look at what it looks like at the center of my card. I decided to use some liquid adhesive to put that down onto the center. All right, slowing down to put the final touches here. I am using some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive here to add some glue to my fine frames. These are the frames I die cut earlier that I was talking about that I had from a previous video. And I'm going to add these onto the card. I decided to do a double layer and there is a frame that goes in between these as well. So I decided to leave that one out so it added a little bit of a space in between. And I think the double frame looked a lot better to pull in your eyes towards the center than the single frame. I then decided to grab a pen, colored pencil or pencil crayon, depending where you're from. I grabbed this in Espresso, it's from Prismacolor, and a ruler, and I decided to just outline the frame of the card. I felt that the frame around the sentiment or the white cardstock kind of got lost in the background and needed a little bit of a push. So you could either ink your edges here or you can go in like I did because it's already glued and use a pencil crayon or a marker and just add in the color that's needed. 
The next thing I did was grab one of the pre-cut and scored note cards from scrapbook.com in Nina Solar White cardstock, and I'm using this as my background. I think this is what really just pulls in the entire card. It makes the white on this card pop, it makes the colors look more vibrant, and overall I am so excited that I chose a white card base for this card. Now if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel, I would totally appreciate it if you did. I've been noticing recently that half of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel, so I would love to see more subscribers decide to click that red button and maybe even the bell so you get notified when I post a new video. Here is a final look at today's card. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial today and that you might give this card a try. If you're interested, all the supplies are listed below and then as well I have a suggestion here and you can click the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day!